Amen. Well, God bless you. You can have a seat. God's good. Amen? Amen. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and go with me to, to Hebrews chapter 12. Now, remember, we talked about this a little bit last week. We'll continue, but talking about identity, what you identify with. What you identify with is a big deal. Amen. If you identify with the old man, then you stay in that stuff. If you identify with the new man, the Christ man, the man that God made, then you identify, you start to become that. Amen. You're already that, but then you start living out of that. You start living out or manifesting what God put on the inside of you. Amen. Yeah. So we know that whatever we, whatever we look at, whatever we think about, that's what usually we gravitate towards. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so if you're always thinking about where you missed it, then you stay missing it. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be cool, man. If you always think about where you missed it or where you didn't, you didn't, you're not good enough, or whatever, then you stay there. But man, when you start thinking about where you made it, when you start thinking about the way God made you and the good things that he did for you, it starts to change things. Yep. So I get this question a lot. Well, how does this, not necessarily from you guys, but you know when you're out and about, how does this help my life? How does this change anything? How, do, how does this make me be a better husband? How does this make me be a better wife, better dad, better mom? Better employer, better employee, come on, yeah. better friend, whatever. How does this make me better as a person? Well, first of all, it's not about you. But secondly, <laughs> secondly, this is the whole ball of wax. Man, when I, don't, when I feel like that I don't make it or that I'm not there, I'm not going to be at my best. But man, when I get a perspective of what God sees, it changes everything. So to identify, remember we've been through this for weeks, identification means to be identical to, to be in the same condition as, to be made one, to be equal in every respect, having the same source, being totally one. So our identification's in him. Our identification is in what Jesus is and who he is and what he did for us. So our identification is not in our flesh, but in who he made us. Well, to really get that, though, we've got to see how God sees us. We talked about this last week, but if you don't see yourself the way God sees you, and you see yourself the way religion's taught us, you'll never, be, you'll never identify with anything. So you've got to see how God sees you. Because of what Jesus did, he sees you as good. He sees you as holy. He sees you without spot or blemish. He sees you through the blood. He doesn't see any bad thing in you. He doesn't see anything but the greatness of what he created. He can't see you any other way. He can't see all your faults. He can't see all the stuff that you struggle with. He sees only the good thing he put on the inside of you. Well, then how can he be said? Oh, because we got Jesus who's ever at the right hand of the Father. We said the Bible says we have a high priest who's sympathetic. Why? Because he, he came and identified with us. He identified with us first. He identified with fallen man. He came as a man, living with God living in him, same as you. 100% man, just like, like your flesh. 100% God, his spirit, just like your spirit. Right. Same deal. Mm -hmm. So I know we went through this last week. I'll go real quick through this, but it's important. Amen. Mm -hmm. Start Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18 again. For you have not come. This is what you've not come to. This is old covenant. You did not come to the mountain. It may be touched and burned with fire, and the blackness of the darkness of the tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and many words, so that those who heard it begged that the word which was spoken to them, they would hear no more, or they couldn't hear it, or they couldn't endure it. Verse 20, for they could not endure what was commanded, and if so much as a beast touched that mountain, it would be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'm exceedingly afraid and trembling. That's not you. Come on, man, that's all the rules and regulations for your flesh. Right. And they had to do it in the flesh, and they couldn't do it. Right. And they knew they couldn't do it. And what's happened? You're not the devil, but if you were, you would come in after all that got wiped away and say, okay, here's the deal. you still got to live by that. Right. you still got to be really good. You've got to be perfect or God's not pleased. You've got to get all your ducks in a row or God's not pleased. If you don't do this, you don't do this, and you don't do this, you don't do this. If you don't meet all these requirements of the law, guess what? Your prayers aren't heard. Guess what? You're not going to get what you got coming, the good stuff you got. You're not going to be under the spout where the blessing comes out. You're not going to get any of it. You're going to be separated because you're not. No, man. 
that puts you back into the same bondage as everybody else. That's why I told you this before. I got a guy I talked golf with forever, and he said, you're a Christian, right? And I said, yeah. He said, man, my, my son-in-law was awesome. I loved him. And then he said, then he became a Christian. Now he's a rear end, but that's not what he called him. <laughs> Come on. I grew up that way. I mean, I was, when you're under judgment, I know I say this all the time, you put everybody under, else under judgment. When you feel like you're in this, you make sure everybody else is in this. That's why it's, instead of, hey, we're loving everybody. That's why you're against things. Why? Because, listen, I, I'm for life. Come on, I'm for the life of God, the Zoe life of God flowing out of us. I'm for us touching everybody we can touch. I'm for God, wherever you go, ministering out of you, flooding out of you, no matter what you're doing, just flooding out of you. No matter if you're at work, if you're, if you're at the store, it doesn't matter. He's just flooding. It doesn't have to be this spiritual, oh, wait a minute, I got a word. You don't have to have bad hair for it. Come on, man. It's just who we are. These signs follow those that what? Believe. See, once you got born again, you became a what? Thank you. So now, this is how God sees us. God sees us as himself. God says, I'm looking at them. The Bible says in, in, in uh, Colossians chapter 2 that we're the very picture of our creator. If that's how our creator, that's how God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, looks at us, shouldn't we look at ourselves the same way? Yep. See, but religion will say, well, that's bragging on you. No, I'm bragging on him. Yes. I'm bragging on what he made me. Yes. That's what I identify with. You guys still here? Yes. Thank you. Verse 22, but you have come to the Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. In other words, you don't have just one, right? I mean, it's not a wonderful life. He didn't get Clarence, and he's going to get his wings. <laughs> and you know, that's the way I would look at it, too. In my flesh, I'd look, I got the, I got the worst guy. I got the worst angel. I mean, you, come on, man, where are you at? That, but see, that's, that's our flesh. But this says an innumerable. Man, you can't, you can't even count them all. We got rooting for us. We got helping us. Come on, man. Good news, not bad news. To a heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Verse 23, to the general assembly or the party. Man, I like it. I say this all the time, but if you identify with him and you see how he looks at us, we ought to be the happiest most fun-loving, partying as people on the planet. I mean, we ought to be, we ought, it ought to be addictive to be around us. It ought to be like, wow, when I'm around you guys, it's fun. Why? I told you this before, but I was a youth pastor, and I had to take these kids on a ski trip. And when I say had to, I had to. But anyway, but so I, I'm praying about it because it's, um, uh, it's a ski trip. So I, what do I do? And the Lord said, I don't want a Bible study. I want them to understand because I had a bunch of, I mean, I mean, I had a bunch of, you know, not, uh, it wasn't like uh, little church kids. How's that? So, uh, anyway, there's a different group. So the Lord said, I want you to show them what a good time in me is like. So I knew exactly what that was like. So we get there, well, the, the guy that was a pastor flew in unannounced and had a Bible study. And I mean, it was like, they'd gotten locked in prison. Girls over here, boys over here, we're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and they're like, oh. And so I'm like, well, you know, it's not my deal, so I'll just go skiing every day, come back and watch these kids just go, <laughs> faking they're sick. I was like, I've, I've done that before. Anyway, that was usually school. Anyway, you guys still here? So I'm watching all this take place. He finally, after two and a half days, he leaves. We got two more days. And so I said, so the, I, I said, I announced so we're at dinner. I said, hey, everybody, listen to me. I stood up and I said, no Bible study tonight. And you would have thought we were at the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah! I mean, they just go crazy. We had this room. It was about like this. So I did like a stand-up comedy deal. I started making fun of all of them. And I mean, they hammered me. They made so much fun of me. They'd get up. Can I, I got something to say. Get up. So you get up, you do this, you? they'd walk around like this and oh, do this. They were making fun of me over and over. And they were all laughing and we we're having a good time. And it, they had a big fire outside. I never told this part. These guys come, you know, all the girls were going to go, hey, uh, can we put the fire out? And I said, I knew what that means. They wanted to pee on the fire. Have at it, man. 
Really? Yeah, go ahead. I don't care. If you get burned, it's not my fault. Go ahead. I got about 10 guys out there standing on these rocks just laughing. I'm like, it's amazing what'll make somebody's day. Anyway. So it showed up, and God said, look, and I still have contact with some of them like, man, they remember that. And it was all about how God wanted to minister out in life. Right. Come on, man. Listen, they, you can have, you're not going to feel bad in the morning. You're going to feel good in the morning. You're not going to feel any regret tomorrow. You're going to feel good about it. You can breathe all the way to your toes. This life in God should set us apart from everybody else. Why? Not because we're religious and we're this way. and because No, because our life is free. Come on, we're not under bondage to anything. We're free to live. We're free to love. We're free to let God out. It's addictive. God, listen, the smell, the aroma of God. We talk about this all the time. It's you can't eat until you can't eat anymore. And if you smell a cinnamon roll, your saliva glands work. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one. Anyway, you guys still here. But you have come to innumerable heavenly Jerusalem, innumerable company of angels, to the party of the church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven. Woo! To the God of the to watch this, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's you. You've been made perfect in him. I'm not talking about your flesh, I'm talking about your spirit. You've been made perfect in him. So what do I identify with? Do I want to identify with the unperfect or the perfect? The perfect. Do I want to identify with the loser or do I want to identify with the winner? The winner. Do I want to identify with the one that's never, ever won or do I want to identify with the one that's undefeated? I want to go undefeated. So I identify with what God's made me. He's made you just. He's made you perfect. He's the judge of what? Perfect. He judged you perfect. He judged you just because of what Jesus did. Now, I know I went through this last time, but this is important. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood, watch this, to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole story. You guys know the story. I'm in um, Israel. We go to the, to the garden tomb. We're going to do that. And I'm supposed to do communion with a buddy of mine named Reza. Can't do it because I can't function told you the story, blah, blah, blah. And then it said, Lord, what is this? I mean, I've been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, experienced you, I'd never felt. I mean, all the, every hair in my body is like, Brr. he said, you're standing in the exact spot where the blood of Jesus is crying out that you've been made righteous. In other words, you're right under the amplifier, man. Well, if that's the case, and it is, because remember over in Genesis chapter 4, verse 10, you know, God tells um, Cain, he says, hey, your brother's your brother's blood is crying out to me. Yeah. It's speaking. Somebody killed me. There's got to be justice for this. Judgment. Jesus' blood speaks better things than that of Abel. Yeah. Come on, man. It says that you've been made just. Yeah. You've been made perfect. Yeah. Well, if it speaks that, then that's the way that God sees you. Yeah. You guys hear? Yeah. So what is this? Well, I can't, if I identify with all the junk in my life and my flesh, I stay in that. If I identify with that and I look at myself that way, I'll go another one. Well, if I identify with a God that makes me go through all these things, the Bible says that Jesus' sacrifice, he only had to do it once. It was good enough. Right. That we don't have to, he doesn't have to get re-crucified. Right. Come on. And we'll get into this, not today, but we'll get into it later, that everything he did, God sees that you did it with him. Right. You're, he identifies you with Jesus. Because of the blood, he identifies you with everything that he is. Because of that, he looks at you the same way he looks at Jesus. Remember John chapter 17, Jesus prays and said, Hey, Father, that they may be one the same way that we're one. That you would love them the same way you love me. That they would know you the same way that I know you. And you would know them the same way you know me. Couldn't do that before. Couldn't do it with Adam. But Jesus is the what? Last Adam. So he took care of everything. One man got us in, one man got us out. So when you got born again, he moved in. Come on, man. That's why Jesus said, when he, hey, you got to be born again. Well, I can't enter my mother's womb. No, no, no. you got to be refathered from above. He's got to kill the old man and bring in a brand new man just like him. Amen. 
So we know we have this, and we identify with that, things change. But if we identify with a God that says, well, you're not praying, right, so I can't do that for you. Um, you're not confessing. Your confession's really messed up, man. When you get that right, then we'll think about it. Well, I'm a confession guy. That's how you got saved. But let me help you. Your confession doesn't move God. Oh, that got really quiet. I got no water. I get a drink of water on that. Huh? You act like you're grabbing something. Oh, he's got. Oh, I got water. I got coffee. Anyway, it's true. Well, the Bible says that your world's framed with your words. That's right, your world. See, it's a form of renewing your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your confession renews your mind. Come on. I look for things. When I, when I look at my body and I said, hey, by the stripes I'm healed, I, most people act like that's some kind of deal, like some magic wand. Well, then God will say, oh, yeah, that's right. I did that. He already did it. I'm doing it when you confess it or I confess it. It's not a magic wand. It's a wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is what he did for me. It's reminding me of what I have. Yeah. It's putting my mindset, that's what I expect. My expectation is what I've been made. Yeah. My expectation is that this, this body's alive, has been made alive by his what? Spirit. Yeah. He quickens or makes alive this mortal body. The reason it's alive is because his spirit's in me, yeah. in this body. That's who I am. Yeah. I'm living out of that. So that same Zoe makes this body perfect. God doesn't live in anything broken, doesn't live in anything run down. He only lives in the best of the best, and he lives on the inside of you. Well, what's your confession to him? My confession is getting me to see myself the way my father sees me. Otherwise, we, it's all about us and what we can do. Well, you don't have enough faith. Well, that's where I was at. And I thought, well, you're right. I probably don't. Because your brain works and your brain calculates. You got this, you got this, no, that ain't going to work. You have this, you have this, no, that ain't going to work. See, whenever it doesn't count, you don't have to go by what you feel anymore. Right. You don't have to go by what you reason anymore. You go by what he sees you and what he says you are. Yeah. Well, I, my confession changes that. Amen. In me. In my mind. Yeah. There it is. But it doesn't move him. How about this one? I got another one for you. Because I was taught this one too. God's not moved by your circumstance. He's only moved by your faith. Well, I'm done. Because I found that the closer I got to God, the more stuff I felt. That one of a big thanks for coming, Vic. I found out that the closer I got to God, the more I felt. Come on, not, not necessarily in my flesh, but in my, I, I, Jesus was moved con with compassion. See him then as a sheep without a shepherd. There was something to move. There was a compassion that moves you or, or drives you a certain way or leads you a certain way. Why? Because it's there's you feel this. And I felt it different than I did before. Instead of somebody coming in and pulling my heartstrings, there was something about God on the inside went right to the root of something. Oh, I see that. Change me. Come on. I found out that the closer I got to him and the more I knew him, the more jealous I was for him. Come on, the more I wanted him. The more I desired to live in this, this spiritual part, the more, I, the more I knew him, the more I experienced his love. The more I experienced his love, the more love I wanted to give out. The more love I gave out, the more I felt it flooding through me. Oh, come on, man. See, everything, I felt it more than I'd ever felt it before. Not from my flesh's standpoint, because your flesh is always like, we don't feel like it. <laughs> you made fun of me. I'm not doing that. You weren't very nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, really, that's where the world is right now. Everybody's amazing. Yeah. Amen. Right. Thank, you. Well, thank you. I got more amens on that as anything else. But. <laughs> but when you identify with him, but first, how he sees you. Hebrews chapter 12, let's click on back to the left. Let's look at verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that word witnesses means evidence givers. Since we're surrounded by so many evidence givers. In other words, we can look at this. We can go through the word and we can see all the guys that did stuff. We can see what Jesus did. We can see a common denominator and how God ministers life. How he did what he did. Since we're surrounded by so many evidence givers. Watch this. So we're surrounded by so many evidence givers. Let us lay aside every weight. 
Sin which so in, easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. In other words, he's saying, listen to me. You're all worried about your sin. You're all worried about all the stuff you got to do, all the rules and regulations. Lay it aside take off. Come on, man, quit thinking about your flesh. Identify with that. Why? Because watch the very next verse. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. See, it's all about looking to him. What did he do? That's what I am. What is he? That's what I am. How does God look at him? That's the way he looks at me. How can he look any different? He sees me through the blood. The blood's crying out. He sees me through the blood. He can't see my screw up. So when I go to him, listen, this is going to be really, really if you're a religious, I'll hear your cow mooing just in a second. I used to every single time. It's, listen, people loved me. They didn't try to put me in bondage, but they did. And so when I got born again, I was eight years old. You know, it was, the whole deal was, look, you're a sinner, and you need to repent every day because you did stuff wrong. I'm eight years old, man. I'm laying in bed. God, I don't know what I did today, but I'm sorry. I was always sorry. Every single time I prayed, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I didn't know what for a lot of times, but, you know, sometimes I knew. <laughs> I knew what I was praying. And it was, I mean, it was not that long ago, really. And the Lord said, why do you always come to me saying you're sorry when I don't know what you're sorry for? Why are you always repenting when there's nothing to repent for? You did that when you got born again. Well, wait a minute. Well, that all made sense. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Doesn't say come begging before the throne of grace. Doesn't say come groveling. Lord, I know I'm not worthy. No, Jesus made you worthy. See, it's a game show. Wait a minute. I can come in any time. I'm not looking at where I didn't make it. I'm looking at where I did make it. And I'm looking to him. So now everything changes. I look to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. It's not my faith. It's his faith that he gave me. It's his, it's his that he did, and he gave it to me. I'm identified with that, so that's what God sees me. He sees me through the blood. He can't see me when I mess up. He can't see me when there's nothing to repent for. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's why on Wednesday nights we talk about this all the time, Lord's Prayer. Great prayer, but it's not a new covenant prayer. Well, it's a, No, it's in the transition. Jesus said he had the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. There's no name of Jesus in that prayer. And now we know we pray to the Father in what? Jesus' name. We know that's the name above every name. We got that. That's our family name. We know that. Well, that's not in there. And he said, forgive us. Well, when you got born again, he forgave you. So now he's saying here, Romans or Hebrews chapter 12, since we're surrounded by so many evidence givers, so much evidence, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Get away from all your fleshly stuff that you're looking at and look unto Jesus so you can run. Come on, man. You ever been skiing? They put you in those big boots. You got to get on those deals. You go fast down the deal, but you can't run in them. You ever been in a hurry to go somewhere? Remember, I had all these kids, and I'm, it's like herding cats. And we were getting on this bus, and I got those, those boots on. You can't run. Every time I read this, I'm like, it's like having those shoes on, man. You can't move. As much as you want to move, you can't. You're tentative in everything you do. But listen, when you look to the author and finisher of who made you, Oh, 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 chicky, chicky, man, it'll change you. <laughs> Romans, chapter 8, one more and we'll go home. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Romans, chapter 8. I'll get there in a minute. See, if this isn't true, what I'm saying isn't true, and if you think, well, I've still got to do this, and I've got to have a walk this way, and I've got to be this way. See, it's out of your spirit, not your flesh. If, you, if, if what I'm saying isn't true, then Romans chapter 8 doesn't make any sense. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in what? See, when you're in Christ, you're in the blood. When you're in Christ, you're in him. Your life's hidden in him. It's not about you, it's about him. It's about his sacrifice, not your sacrifice. It's about his obedience, not your obedience. It's about his goodness, not your goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the Bible says that, you know, obedience is better than... I understand. But if you're doing it in your flesh, 
Guess what? You won't maintain it. I've told you this before, but I'm working at a place, and um, we had this, there was three of us, assistant pros there, and we had one guy that was, uh, I called him Eddie Haskell. If you've never seen Leave It to Beaver, you know, Eddie Haskell, hey, Mrs. Smith, how are you today? I mean, he's just a brown nose, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable, and the, and the biggest knucklehead in the world when nobody was watching. So I worked with this other guy, guy named Marty, and he's like, oh, I said, I called him Marty Moose. Did you ever see a Vacation? Yeah. Anyway. Wow, you guys, man, you're not much of a movie goer. But anyway, <laughs> it's a long time ago. So I was like, hey, Moose, look, he, he, he was a little bitty guy, but I said, he, he can't make it. You No way. He, he, that big a brown nose, he, and, he, and he's, that's not genuine. That's not who he is. There's no way he can sustain this. No way. He's going to get fired. Oh, there's no way he'll get fired. Everybody loves him. He's everybody. Hey, Mr. Smith, they're taking him to dinner. Trust me. No way. I don't know much, but I know that. Okay. It wasn't two weeks later. I don't remember what he did. It was so long ago. He was gone. He came, Moose came in that day. You were right. Of course, I always tell everybody the same thing. It is rough being right all the time, but... See, if it's all about your flesh, you can't maintain it. Come on, man. Listen, oh, you got to start, you, you got to do this. You got to, no, wait a minute. I'm living out of my spirit, man. I'm living out of my spirit. The Bible says that my spirit and my flesh are at constant war with each other. My flesh wants to do one thing. And, no, but whenever I start living out of this guy, when I live out of who I am, my house, my flesh gets in line. Whenever it feels the benefit of living this way, when it lives, lives out and says, wow, wait a minute, we just told the truth and it felt good to us. We just helped somebody and it felt good to us. And we did it, it starts seeing the benefit of it, doesn't argue quite as bad. Thank you, Matt, for coming. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to, well, you've got to walk. No, that's who you are. Watch this. For the law, I love the law of this. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has made me what? Free. I like being free. From the law of sin and death. Amp says, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. The law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and death. That means I'm not under this, this flesh anymore is not dominant over me. I've got the same thing Jesus has. I've got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of me. Well, if that's the case, if there's no condemnation, then how can God look at you any other way but through the blood and see you as perfect? If there's no con, because there's, there's things that you do, there's things that I've done that, that I don't know that it's wrong, but it's wrong. For instance, I'll give you one since you're looking at me like that. I was probably 25, maybe 26, and I was out to eat with these guys, and we were, you know, a bunch of guys, we were everybody saved, everybody loved God, the good guys, and we're talking, and this one guy says to me, and I don't know where he, you know, he's, I don't know if he's Presbyterian, or I don't know what he was, but, you know, he wasn't what, he wasn't what I'd call one, of, he was kind of an outlier guy from who we ran around with. He said, well, if you're a Christian, how come? And he named off like two things. I was like, no, you know, my first deal, no Holy Ghost, you're out. But it stuck in me. And I remember I went to bed that night, and I was just talking to the Lord. I said, you know, Lord, if there's anything truth to that, and it was like on, in, on the inside of my spirit, there is. Well, I don't want to be that way. And it was amazing the conversation I had with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I know you're sitting there saying, well, if God doesn't see it, well, you've got Jesus who's sympathetic. You've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I don't want to get too complicated. Three or one, yes, but they all have different functions. Come on. So the Father sees you this way. Jesus gets it. And he, he's an ever-present help. Come on, sticks closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit is here. So sometimes you'll do something. Oh, that kind of feels funny. Well, that's your correction. Come on. Come on. He's there to lead you and guide you. Come on. So it's like, Lord, if there's anything, there is. Ah. 
Man, I mean, I had a conversation, cried like a four-year-old at Kmart getting beat up. <laughs> Horrible. Woke up, felt great. Felt great. Next time I saw it, I said, hey, man, thanks for speaking that to me. What are you talking about? You know, didn't, like he didn't even really remember it. I said, wow, even a Presbyterian, no Holy Ghost, he can flow in God. <laughs> got the Spirit of God living on him, amen. So you got a correction that comes, though. So he's leading you all the time. Certain things, I didn't really realize that in my life, but it was there. I've told you this before, I'll tell you again, so you look like, you know, we wind up in our flesh doing certain things that, that keeps us in a place where we feel like we won't get punched. It's the best way I can put it to you, right? It's called a defense mechanism. Well, we have certain things we don't know we have. And so most of my life, you know, I, I'd, I'd discovered, I, I've got a brother who lives in Alaska, and I wish I had his defense mechanism. His defense mechanism is nothing bothers him. I mean, nothing. Zero. You could take everything he's got, and he'd go, you can have the car, too. I mean, that's just the way he is. I'm like, why didn't I get that one? That one's awesome. But mine is, I just, if, if I see something coming, I just kind of go, like I'm not here. <laughs> I escape into me. I don't say anything. I don't do anything. I just, I just shut down. And so it's like, and I think I'm doing everybody a favor. And then everybody's like, what did I do? You didn't do anything. I did something, so I'm... I think nobody can see me. You ever been rabbit hunting? Your rabbits are stupid. That's why God made a lot of them, because it's a food chain deal. <laughs> and you watch a rabbit run, and it'll do this. And you're like, you're sitting right there, big man. But you think you're hiding. I was a rabbit. I'm like, you can't see me, but you're right there. And you know, they got pointed out in my life a few years ago, and I'm like, no. And the like, Lord's like, Yeah. <laughs> So that means it's going to be uncomfortable for me. Yeah. That means I got to rely more on the whole. Yeah. You mean that every time I start to shut down, the Lord goes, oh, oh yeah, hey, I'm out. I'm here. I'm now I'm wild, baby. Go ahead and punch me. Because that's what it felt like, but nothing happened. See, so you, you get all these little things and you, you look and you don't even realize you got it, but thank God for God. Thank God you got God living on the inside of you. Thank God he leads you and guides you. Thank God those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You, you're a child of His. Yeah. So He's leading you into good. He's, put, he's setting you up to win. He's setting you up to succeed. He's setting you up so that everybody around you is better. Yeah. Right. Told you this one before, but, you know, uh, you know, Mary and I are talking, and she said, you act like you know everything. And I said, well, the Word says I do. <laughs> but I know any from the Holy One. I know all things. And then she said, you always get the last word. I said, no, I don't. I've told you this before, I've got so many stories. So I'm like, whatever, you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm sitting there, I'm talking to Bobby, we're doing something. He goes, man, you always have to have the last word. I'm like, all right, all right. So instead of saying, no, I don't, I went, I probably said it to myself. But. You see things start to show up, and it's like God's, so it's not that he's like, well, you're just this. No, he's leading you all the time. Because you got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. So there's things that you may get into and it's like, no, oh, that's, that's not good. Or then maybe you're led by that. And that's what I mean. You become more and more and more sensitive to the Holy Ghost. See, when you think it's all about your flesh and all the stuff that you got to do, you, I found out I wasn't sensitive to him at all. As a matter of fact, whenever I felt like I'd achieved something in that, I'd be like, I did it. And the way I grew up and the whole faith deal was, well, how'd you get that? Well, I took a scripture and I believed God. And I confessed that scripture. I used my faith. And that thing came to me because of my faith. And because of that, and then God blessed me. There was a whole lot of I and a little bit of God. After that, well, how'd you get that? Man, God blessed me. Well, how's that happen? Man, I'm just... I got born again. Because I'm born again, I'm in the family. Because I'm in the family, this stuff shows up. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with him. Everything now, I look to him. I don't look to my faith. I don't look to my goodness. I don't look to anything. I look to him. I look to him and thank God for him. I thank God that he is who he is. I thank God that he gave Jesus. And if he gave Jesus, how will he not freely give you everything else? I look to him. I don't look to me. It's not about what I do. It's about the sacrifice that's already been made. 
So now there's no condemnation. That doesn't mean that hmm, I got this on the inside. And you start seeing how all this stuff starts fitting together, and you look back and go, wow, that was all God. Didn't even know it. I've only got so many, but I'll tell you a couple real quick. Uh, again, you've, you guys heard a lot of these, but I remember one time I was going fishing, borrowed this guy's, it's called, it was called a bass buggy, and it's real small, and it's got two little seats in it. And we were going fishing, I was, I was excited. Had been working a lot, had a day, day off, and I, I was going with this guy, so I borrowed this, we put it in the back of this truck. We drive, we, didn't, we were going to go into Walmart real quick and get some plastic crawdad things. And so the Lord said, somebody needs to stay with this truck. And I don't mean that I heard an audible voice. Somebody needs to stay with the truck. I just meant on the inside, I felt like somebody needs to stay with the truck. I was like, well, I'm just going like right there. It's like, no, you need to stay with the truck. And I was like, eh. I mean, I get to the door and I'm like, eh, eh. Well, you know what I did. I didn't stay with the truck. You know, well, he can't pay for it all. And I, you, somebody needs to stay with it. Come back out, they stole the chairs. Now I got to find, those are hard to find. Couldn't fish. You know, we did, but we stood up and we fell in. He was horrible. I was like, God, I just had to listen to God. Two years later, I'm at a quick trip, and I'm getting, ready, I'm getting ready to go duck hunting in the afternoon. I got my boat, and I got all my stuff in my boat. And the Lord says, don't leave that truck here. I was like, last time my seats were gone. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I got to go in and pay. This was way before you had a little, you know, it was old, old school. You had to go in and give them cash. You actually had something in your pocket, <coughs> not a note from your mom. So I, I get, get in, so I said, well, all right, Lord, what do I do? i got to pay for this, and I can't leave it. And so look around. There's nobody here. Pull right up. So the, I mean right up in front of this quick trip. I take up the whole thing. And as I got out of my truck, I just glance, and I see this guy sitting over here in his truck. He hits the steering wheel and drives off. Says, that guy was going to steal my stuff. It's just being led. It's knowing ahead. He's leading you. He's guiding you. But it's, hey, it's what you identify. And the more you identify with how he sees you, you guys still here. For the law of the spirit of life, the way translation says, for the law of the spirit, which breathes life, absorbed in, from the Messiah into you, has taken care of the law of sin and death. Another translation said, the spirit of Jesus possesses you. And puts an end to the authority of the fatal results that were brought by sin. I love it. He put an end to the fatal results. So don't look at yourself and identify with the fatal results, but identify with life. Amen. You close your eyes, bow your heads, nobody.